If you're a computer science student or you're thinking about getting into the degree, then please watch this video. I've been talking to a lot of students recently and the way you guys are thinking about this degree is completely wrong and it really made me want to make this video and break down the harsh reality of a computer science degree. Now first, for a little bit of background, I myself was a computer science student. I started my degree in 2018, and in 2021, during the COVID pandemic, I ended up dropping out. Not because I was failing, I actually had a very high GPA, I could have easily finished the degree, but I realized it wasn't the best use of my time, and I had a lot of other opportunities that I decided to pursue. That in mind, I know many people that finished the computer science degree. I went through almost all of the courses. I finished five out of eight semesters, and I have a really good perspective of what what it's like to be a computer science student considering I was and also what you can do if you're not a computer science student because I've had many jobs and lots of opportunities without finishing that degree. Now a lot of students today are kind of lost when it comes to this degree. They don't realize what this actually means and what they need to be doing while they're going through the degree to actually become employable. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to get job ready while you're going through this degree, things that you can start doing right now, the biggest opportunities you have while you're in the degree, the biggest mistake you're most likely making, and then touch on AI and if that's going to take your job. So let's talk about getting job ready. Now, the first thing that I need you to understand is that most of what you learn in a computer science degree is not needed for a job. In fact, a lot of the skills that you're going to need to be employable, you're going to have to learn on your own because it's simply not a part of the computer science curriculum. A software developer, a software engineer is a much different thing than a computer scientist, which is kind of what you're learning in the degree. There's a lot of theory. There's a lot of math. Sure, you learn how to problem solve, but there is so many other technologies, languages, frameworks, skills that you need if you want to be able to land a job. I say this because a lot of students get to the time where they start applying for jobs for internships or they want to land an entry level position and they realize all of a sudden they don't know 80% of the things that are listed on the job requirements. So if you're in the degree, make sure you have the mindset now that you need to do a lot of work outside of it. You need to be building personal projects, learning on your own, building hard stuff so that by the time you get to the point where you want to apply for a job, you're not grinding hours upon hours to try to meet all of these requirements a few weeks before your interview. So let me share with you a few things that you should be doing throughout your degree so that that isn't you. Now, first of all, you need to constantly be learning new stuff. You need to be learning on your own, figuring things out, watching videos, going through tutorials, going through courses, certifications, whatever it may be. You need to be developing skills outside of the degree and specifically in languages and technologies that aren't directly in your curriculum. So many computer science students only end up knowing the languages that are taught in their degree. And most of the times that's something like Python and Java, maybe a little bit of C++. If you want to qualify for more jobs and you want to stand out, especially coming out of this degree, try to learn something that wasn't taught in the degree. Learn about mobile app development, machine learning, front end development, whatever, right? It doesn't matter. But the point is learn something else so that you have something else under your belt that not every single computer science graduate has. That's going to help you stand out a lot. Now, the most important thing that you should be doing in order to learn these technologies is to build hard stuff, build cool projects, focus on building one really impressive project every year in your computer science degree, something that potentially has users that you spend a ton of time and effort on that you really polish, that you make feel professional, that's complicated, and that's going to really help you stand out. I talked to a lot of computer science students recently, and most of their resume projects just suck. They were built in a few hours hours. The front end looks like crap. It's not very complicated. It's not unique at all. It's just something they found online. Try to build something really interesting that you put a lot of effort and time into. If you even just have one really great resume slash portfolio project, that's going to help you stand out a ton because so many people just don't have that. Now, while I'm on the topic, I do want to let you know that I just reopened my private mentorship program, DevLaunch. Now, this gives you direct one-on-one -on -one access to me. And if you want to see if you're a good fit for it, you can apply from the link below. This is not for complete beginners. This is for people that already know how to code and are already at an intermediate or advanced level and looking to make that leap to land potentially their first software developer role. Some people have come in and actually asked for questions related to their startup, business advice, all of those kind of things. So I'm happy to help you with anything 
something if you are a right fit. So if you want access to that program and direct access to me, you can apply from below. Bluntly, we're only able to accept a few more people. We actually accepted the first 10. Then we closed the program to really focus on making it fantastic. And now we're reopening it again just for a few more slots and then we'll be closing it again. Now what I want to do is talk about the biggest mistake that almost all computer science students make. And in fact, almost all university students make. Now that is putting way too much emphasis on your GPA. Now look, the GPA is important. Of course, you need to pass your classes. You shouldn't be failing. You shouldn't be at risk of being kicked out of school. But once you get to a point where you have like a B, a B plus, you're doing decent in school, you have like a 75% average, there's really no need to push further than that and try to get the best grades possible. Now look, I know this is controversial. A lot of you come from families where grades is pretty much all that mattered, right? You needed the best grades to get into university. But the truth is your GPA really doesn't matter so long as it's good enough. No one has ever asked me what my university GPA was, and I don't know a single person who landed a job because they had a high GPA. In fact, most times now, we don't put it on our resume, it never gets asked, and you have to spend so much more effort and time to get those really high grades when really all that's needed is good enough. Now I say this because again, most of what you're learning in a computer science degree doesn't translate to what you do on the job. So if you spend all of your waking hours trying to get the best possible grade, grinding for a 99% where you really get into diminishing returns territory, you're wasting so much time that could be spent in a better place. It is significantly better to have a decent GPA and fantastic portfolio projects, really great skills outside of the computer science degree, networking, going to events, really working on your resume, your LinkedIn profile, doing all of these things that actually give you a chance to land a job than it is to just put all of your effort into raising this number that really has no value. Now I tell this to you as someone who had a very high GPA in university. The first year I did what I'm describing. I spent all of my time and effort working on the degree. And then I realized very quickly, my GPA really doesn't matter. As long as I get a good enough GPA, I'm fine. And I'm going to start skipping some classes, not going to all the labs or tutorials, just doing pretty much the bare minimum to get by so that I could spend all of my other hours working on things that actually made a difference. I understand this is controversial. This is obviously my opinion, but I highly recommend you genuinely ask yourself, what am I doing with my time and what am I getting out of this? Am I just solely focusing on this degree when I don't even care about a master's or PhD or this GPA doesn't matter? Or am I actually doing things that help me potentially land a job in the future? And am I raising my skills, building up these skills, building a portfolio that's going to carry me very far? And that's my challenge to you. Genuinely ask yourself, why are you spending all this extra time and effort in the degree? And if you don't have a good answer for it, then maybe you want to readjust what you're doing with your days and where you're allocating your time. Now to flip things around on you, I wanna talk about the biggest opportunities you have as a computer science student. Because I myself, I like to shit on the computer science degree, I have all kinds of controversial videos about it, but at the end of the day, there are some really valuable things you get as a computer science student that you really should try to take advantage of. Now the first is networking. If you go to any type of school, you instantly have way more networking opportunities because you're in an environment where you're surrounded by other computer science students. So try to make friends, try to meet people, try to talk to your professors, take advantage of the environment that you're in and get to know as many people as you possibly can because those are the type of connections that can really do wonders for you in the future. Even for the two and a half years I spent in my computer science degree before I dropped out, I met a bunch of fantastic people. I ended up hiring some of them later on to do some dev work for me. I learned about how they were landing positions where they were finding success and it was a really valuable thing that I got out of the degree. Now, along those same lines, my university had all kinds of clubs, all kinds of events related to computer science. I didn't really take advantage of these, but these are fantastic things that you can take advantage of, and they can really pad your resume and give you a leg up. If you're running the computer science club, if you participate in some kind of hackathon or event at your university, if you're doing all of these things to build some experience outside of strictly your computer science degree, that is fantastic. And when you're a computer science student, these are a lot Lot more accessible to you. Hackathons, for example, a fantastic thing that I always recommend. As a computer science student, you can get sponsored to go to these hackathons. I remember I went to one in Montreal when I was in Ottawa. This is in Canada. This is about maybe like a three, four hour drive away from my school, if I remember correctly. And the reason I was able to go to that and go to it for free was because I was enrolled in a computer science degree. So take advantage of these opportunities if you are in the degree and don't waste the valuable components of it. Now, the final thing to touch on is what I know you're all concerned about, and that is AI. 
Is AI gonna replace you? Does the computer science degree mean anything? Are there even gonna be developers in five years? Now look, I will tell you, AI is not going to replace your job, but it will drastically change what you do and the role that you have as a developer. You're gonna be turning into more of a prompt engineer, someone who's reviewing more code than you are necessarily writing it completely from scratch. If you are a computer science degree student, start embracing that now start using AI. I'm not telling you to cheat on your exams and tests. It's still important to know how to code, but start getting that in your workflow as early as possible and learn how to be as efficient as you possibly can using AI. Look, AI does not simply strip away and replace all of these jobs. We still need people to use the AI and to know when it's going wrong, when it's making mistakes, and when it's giving you the correct output. I can tell you now as a more senior developer, AI has massively increased my productivity. I'm so happy that it exists and I'm not worried about it taking my job, I'm simply learning how to use it to the best of my ability so that I can really stand out as more of a 10x developer. So start doing that early, don't be afraid of AI, use it, and as a junior developer, it can also help you learn coding much faster, so it's definitely a great resource. I have all kinds of videos where I talk about this topic, so I'm not gonna ramble about it too much. The point is, AI is the future, learn how to use it, don't be too scared, it's gonna affect literally every single industry. And if you're someone who's technical, you already have a huge advantage because so many people don't even know how to use AI and they're the ones that really should be more concerned. Anyways, guys, that's what I have for you in this video. If you are interested in that mentorship program, you can apply from the link below and I look forward to seeing you in another video.